This is the first ever Only Eye Athletics podcast. I'd like to introduce Sean, my buddy from Butler, PA. And um, Sean, if you just want to give a quick intro about yourself and um, describe the Butler County Milers to start. Yeah, sure. I could I could do that. Um, so um, <clears throat> my name is Sean Harkar. I'm local to Butler, Pennsylvania. So for those not familiar with Butler, uh, we are one hour north of Pittsburgh. Um, I've been running <clears throat> with the, with a group that the, that Dean mentioned, uh, the Butler County Milers, and we've been doing that for three years. Um, we um, proudly say like since 2020. So we picked, uh, the, you know, the best time to start a running club, uh, January of 2020. And, but, you know, like, hey, we, we started it really right before the, whatever, the pandemic and made, made it through it. And here we are, we're still here today. So I'm not, I'm not uh, a fast guy like, like Dean, <laughs> but, um, but as far as, uh, as far as that goes, um, just, I guess a, I'll try to make a quick background on that. So my my wife, Jamie, she moved to Pennsylvania from Northern California. And she had some background in running. I did not. Um, so we decided that, you know, we were going to start running and we looked for, we just looked for a running club. And Butler didn't find, did not find one. We found um, a group 15, maybe 20 minutes away from us but nothing like right in the area. And when she was in Northern California, she ran with a group that was called the Lake County Milers. So we just decided that we would be the Butler County Milers. And the lady from the Lake County Milers could not have been more proud when she saw that Jamie started the Butler County Milers. And at first we just seemed like we were a couple of crazy people running around in the snow around town. But, you know, over time it's, um, it's, just been the, the best thing that we've ever done. I would say that. I would say that genuinely. It's been the best thing we've ever done in, in our life. I, so. I will say <clears throat> the Butler County Mallers is one of the nicest running groups and supportive groups that I've ever met and maybe around. I don't want to like stomp on anybody else's feet, but you guys are really supportive in your uh, group. And you guys always seem to want to incorporate everybody, every skill level, and you guys try to keep it fresh by doing different things. Um, I know you guys do a lot during the week. Uh, and I see you guys post like a schedule every week. So what do you guys try to do during the week to get people out and about? Well, I think. Um, <clears throat> so if I'm just being honest, there is no one thing there's no one person I, I i think one of the things that has gelled and really worked well like over time with our group just there's no like i don't look at it like um i look at it like everybody's equal man like if i'm just being if i'm just being honest like so me and jamie we work good in, in terms of a group because um, Jamie, she's not like our fastest runner, but she or by any means, but she's certainly fast enough that she could be out like with like kind of the the more towards the front people, and I can also be hanging out easily in the back, like you know. So, um, we you know we have people that go anywhere from like a six maybe a, like a six ish minute mile to, you know, if someone wants to come out and do an 18 minute mile, like we don't care, you know, and there's a lot of specialty groups. And one of the things that I think that kind of makes our group maybe a little unique for the area. So you have the kind of like exclusive road running groups, you have exclusive trail running groups. Um, we are what we are like, we're just a hybrid and they're very different communities. Like if like, a, like a road running, like, I, you know, I want to qualify and I want to run Boston and that's 
or, or you know, like that's an incredible thing, but it's just a totally different community than, you know, what you're going to find when you're, when you got someone like, you know, going up and down mountains or, you know, trekking through the woods all day, you know, they're just totally different. Um, so we, we currently, we do group runs, uh, organized group runs four days a week, um, Tuesday, Thursday evening, um, Wednesday, we call it like a rise and grind, but we do like Wednesday, like five fifteen in the morning. If you don't have time during the day or at night, you can get, get one in before work. And then we have a, a Saturday, like 9am. So we, we kind of vary times and, but yeah, I don't know. Um, and there are just people in our group, like everybody. And I mean this, like there are people that kind of come into the group and they all bring something unique about themselves. So like, like our buddy, Dave, like Dave is a totally just humble never takes credit for anything kind of guy he's he you know he's like kind of like our master craftsman he makes like all the all the awesome wooden awards and and not just awards i mean dave is just a selfless person like he goes on he makes things for people and then like our friend sarah like sarah um sarah just is very giving and loving and caring so like there was one time a handful of us decided we would go try to have an adventure around lake arthur lake arthur is in the middle of marine state park and so we decided well we would try to trek and just go the entire way around lake arthur you know which, which is pretty far it, it is so it ended up being like 32 and a half miles and some of it's existing trail system, uh, some of it's like back park service roads, some of it, you know, we did this in the winter, so some of it would be like swampy and marsh and almost unpassable in other times of the year. So we did so we did it when some of the ground would be was, was frozen, you know, from it being the winter. So we got through some of that stuff just from the ground being hard. And then some of it, you know, it was like no trail at all. There was a little bit of bushwhacking and I'm convinced you don't have to do this, but, but for the, we wanted to finish before we didn't want to be just trekking out there in the dark all night. So we, it, we did it in the morning and we ended kind of like at sunset, but to get in and finish by sunset, we, we went right along highway 422 for about I don't know, a quarter mile, you know, there's a wide shoulder of the road, but that was just like a couple of us just being whatever adventurous, I guess, for the day. Um, but back to Sarah though. So Sarah, like me, Jamie, a couple of us, I mean, and we know better, but we went out with like no plan at like at all. We were like, okay, well, we'll drop some water here and we'll have, dude, I would have imploded. Like if like Sarah basically crewed us around the lake, like she drove, you know, she showed up with food. And so that's, you know, that's who she is. She, and, and she makes, um, we nicknamed them Sarah's I'm doing something hard cookies. So Sarah makes these cookies and, she, and so far she's only given them out when you're doing something hard. So like if you're doing like a Goggins challenge or you're going to go around the lake today. So Sarah shows up with her. We call them Sarah's. Uh, I did something hard cookies, you know, um, our friend Megan. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, what, uh, no, I was you... just gonna say it's it's a good it's a good award and uh motivational tool, I guess. Cookies are always fun. The, they are, and you know, and and honestly, I'll end it like I would say I could say something about everybody in our group, like and 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 I don't I honestly don't want to leave anybody out, but I could, like you know, our friend Megan, she got all of us into like craft milk. She goes out to some like some farm um that she's always passing to and from work and i never knew there was like root beer flavored milk and caramel flavored milk and all this stuff and and it sounds silly but in like do i go 
we wouldn't, it's not like something you drink on a daily basis, but we've come, because of Megan, we've come, that's come to be like a reward. Like you go run, you know, a big race or you go do a hard thing. And Megan shows up with her craft milk, like here's milk to celebrate. And, you know, so it's, but it's just like everybody, you know, um, everybody brings something, I guess is what I'm going to say. And if I, and if I sat here and named everything that every person does, I'd be doing it all day. But that, and that's, <clears throat> we wouldn't be anything without one another. And, and that's just the way I look at it. Like, I don't look at it like I, I'm better than anybody else or anybody else is better than me. I think we're all human beings, man. That's just, and I think that's why we work. We, we, I, I will say, I will say when I've met probably 10 to 15 different members now throughout my ventures and it doesn't matter if it's the young kids or like the older adults, they're all very supportive and they always wait for one another, support one another. And the one thing I will say is I don't think I've ever seen one member of your group not smiling at a race. <laughs> I mean, the races, you know, when, you know, I don't look at running like work or like, like it doesn't have to be maybe when I started out, I looked at it like that and I look at it a little differently now, but I'm a race day, man. That's, that's all fun. And if you're doing something hard, I mean, genuinely hard, like that's what you signed up for. Hopefully knowing that ahead of time. So when you get there and you're in that low or it's hard, I mean, that's what, you, that's why you're there. You know what I mean? So that, like even if it sucks like you just embrace it because that's there was a reason you went for it like in the first place it's like you know how, how i look at it so all right so what was it last weekend or two weekends ago uh you guys organized the goggins challenge i see you're wearing a shirt <laughs> that was actually not swear to god it was not intentional <laughs> like i i this is what i wore our, our thursday night run then I it was not honestly it was not planned. But you you guys you organized a nice the, the Goggins challenge, which if uh, nobody knows is four miles for every four hours for forty eight hours. Um, yep. So how many people ended up finishing? And did any you know you have any like hot takes how people felt about the challenge if they felt anything like different before than they did after? Or plus I I did see you guys had some cool um awards and stuff like that for people who participated that's all dave that's so um <clears throat> so i think the goggins challenge that the four by four by 48 challenge that has been going on for four years now and we personally have done it three years so we found out about it the the very like real late I, like the first year, maybe even possibly after it happened. And I can tell you that I personally was like nowhere mentally, physically in a place to do it. But I was like, you know, man, that sounds like really cool. <clears throat> so um, I won't focus a lot on the past. So three years ago, we did it. And it was just me, Jamie and our buddy, Mike. And the three of us did it. Um. And we had some friends show up to like one and we had some friends show up to the last leg. Mike did pretty much the other 10 legs alone by himself. Um, and then Jamie and I had each other. And then last year it was uh, me, Jamie, Lori, Corey, and Mike. It was the, five of us did the whole thing and but what made last year a very different experience was we had friends and people just that we love and care about that showed up to every single leg so you know uh, someone in the group or a couple people in the group it didn't matter if it was one in the morning or five in the morning or nine in the morning or nine at night <clears throat> You know, there were people, there was somebody showed up. So, and I can tell you that doing or sharing that experience with somebody else is uh, totally different 
than than doing it solo or doing it alone. And I'm not saying that there's not value in doing it either way. Um, but it is like to me, it would almost like lose its like not lose its meaning to us because I think there is value if you just went out and did this thing solo. There's absolutely value in that. But I cherish the experience of sharing that with other people. And and because there's like it's it's the community, right? Like when you do something hard and you share this like hard experience with somebody else, like that there's something like bond building about that. And I don't know um uh what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, like so you almost get amnesia to how hard the challenge is like we did it like the last you know two years and then here we came and we did it again this year with with uh friends and other people within the group and you forget like you forget how hard it is so this year this year something i thought was kind of cool and it wasn't anything we went for it just happened but i thought was really cool this year so this is the first year um we had more uh actually ladies finish the challenge than guys uh so we had five guys and eight women or five men eight women do the entire challenge uh so on the guys it, so it was me Corey Nowakowski, michael jones dan kendra bill greenewalt and i'll say something there uh and then in the women it was my wife jamie our friend Sarah Porter, Tracy Hanna, Lori Fromlack, Donna Barker, uh, Ruth Cunningham, Laura Chevalier, and Karen Greenwald. So that, I like, that's a I pretty say, solid group of people right there. It, it is. And I want to say something about everybody, but I'll tell you what. Who I oh, oh and Elizabeth Dickey. Um, so actually there were nine women, five guys. Um, because I didn't want to leave anybody out. Like that's so I I had it written down, and um, but Karen and Bill, Karen and Bill were like seventy years old, man, and wow. blow like you know I follow them on Strava and I see what they do. Like they blow Karen and Bill were like goals to me as a person. Like I want to be out on trails and on mountains and doing. 50 K's and doing the stuff that I see Karen and Bill doing like they're out every day, you know? And, um, but it totally blew me away when, when Karen and Bill did the challenge this year. And as far as this year's challenge. Um, so if, if I spoke to that from my, from just my personal experience. So I knew every year we've tried to make it find a way to make what is already a a ridiculously hard challenge. We, we tried to find ways to make it harder. And I intentionally and unintentionally found that this year. Um, I actually personally never wanted to quit a challenge, quit this challenge more than I did this year. So one of the things that I did personally leading up to the challenge, it would make no sense at all. Like you're going to do you know, you're going to be running every four hours for two days straight. So um, this is like not some big accomplishment when I look at things like other people do. But I like I went out that week and I did what was the, per, you know, a personal best for me. It was the most miles like I've ever done in a week. And then up being like something like 105 miles in that week when Jeez. I when when I tacked the goggins in. But so so there was that aspect of it. Well, that's that's a lot of miles for a week. That's like a professional marathoner does. Well, I I would say this. I did a lot of miles in like whatever, like heart rate zone one. So I was, it sounds weird, but I was going out there. I got a hill by my house. So I would just go out and do hill repeats a lot, but I was doing them at like a relaxed pace. So, cause I knew how many miles I was going to try to do, but so we got 
some really very Goggins appropriate weather to start the challenge. It was, um, or felt appropriate. We had like that first night, it was probably the weather was in like the thirties. It was raining, but we had like 20 some mile an hour wind. So it was just like, you know, here you go. You want a Goggins challenge? Well, here's a day's worth of rain and, you know, 20 some mile an hour wind. And, but for it to end, like our last leg, it, it could not have been more picturesque. I mean, it was like, I got to go out in a t-shirt and shorts, you know, on a sunny day for the last leg, like when we all got to get together and celebrate. But what, what genuinely almost broke me in this challenge was, so I, my old, I have, I have a couple kids. My oldest kid had picked up this like stomach bug at school. And this was before the challenge. So I, I took them to the doctor, you know, and they tested negative for everything. They tested negative for COVID, flu, and um, whatever, something else, strep. They, they checked them. Everything was negative. Well, the doctor, the school nurse, they told me, apparently they'd seen all these like cases of like this was just something that was going around. So my kid, you know, had like 102 fever and they had a stomach bug. Well, they were like all recovered. Okay. Well, whatever they had, I caught and I caught it like right in the middle of this challenge. I'm like halfway into this challenge. I, I found myself like, you know, if I'm just being honest, I mean, I, I threw up three or four times in the middle of this challenge. I got borderline like hypothermic. I like popped and took a hot shower. So I will very admittedly say like I had probably four legs, man. I was doing like, you know, 19, 20 minutes a month. Like just, I didn't want to leave the house, you know, and uh, but in hindsight, I'm I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I didn't give up, but I, I wanted to give up, you know? And, um, but other than that, I, I did a good job with setting my alarms and waking up on the dot. But I will say my wife saved my ass one time on, on what would have been like 11. My alarms were going off, dude. I was dead to the world and she, she got me up. So, you know, and and I, I felt, I really felt for Jamie because, so you think like, okay, well, if you s slow down somehow, I, I don't know that that helps you in the challenge because you lose like 30 minutes out of your rest window. And poor Jamie, I tell her, don't wait for me. But she, she is who she is. So she wouldn't let, you know, so she just kept doing, she was running and, and faster than me while I was just trying to s slug my way through this thing. So she ended up doing probably like an extra of like 12 miles because, because I was, you know, just, just trying to get through it. Um, so, you know, her, well, that, her that, that's, that's love there. Oh man. I, you know, I get, I joke around and I give her a hard time. She gives me a hard time, but dude, you can't, I couldn't have gotten some, a better person certainly for me i could not have gotten a better human being in my life than jamie so yeah I, you guys do mesh very very well thank you but but i, I will say this about the <laughs> challenge that if people don't know the date this year it's when uh pennsylvania had probably the shittiest storm that we've had <laughs> in a couple of years where it knocked out power for counties and towns that didn't get it back for i didn't have power for 40 plus hours so, like, that's the kind of thing that they were doing during the Goggins Challenge. They had that wind, they had rain, and then the storms. I mean, I guess they had power, but everywhere else around them, they didn't. So that's a little bit added on to what they were dealing with during the challenge. Well, and we – so we have tried to always honor doing it, like, the first weekend in March, every March. So now, like, to our local group and – you know, because there's there's kind of like like we're in Butler, but 
some people we know they're in like other parts of Butler County. you right. So, um, so we, we kind of, the way that we did it as far as it being like a group or like an open challenge is we said, okay, well, if you complete the challenge between March 1st and March 14th, like we gave kind of like a two week window, like, Hey, if you go knock out a Goggins challenge in these two weeks, you know, you get credit and you can tell how good Dave's craftsmanship is because like the involvement in the challenge, I mean, every, like, you know, a lot of people, Dave's awards, man, like get, you know, a lot of people to, to do this stuff and it's hard stuff, man. And, um, but, um, no, I, I guess I would just, you know, kind of, kind of, I guess, uh, leave it at that, but. All right. Um, going down the list here, what I had, uh, this weekend is the rabid raccoon. I know you guys have a, a pretty big contingency coming. Um, are you guys looking forward to it at all? Or oh yeah, with with the weather, I know it's kind of going to be bad if you're doing like the hundred or hundred k. Yeah. Uh, so so we're we're super excited, <laughs> or Jamie and I are. So we have. I, I know um, I'm not. <laughs> well, so here's so here's how. Um, well, I, that I understand because you're well, you're signing up for the full hundred miler, man. So I get it. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, th yeah. I think I get it. So, well, it, it's uh, still dependent on the it, it's one of those things. It's like, do I want to do it with the weather? Because if I'm going to be running at 20 degrees at four o'clock in the morning and then at midnight, is it worth, you know, risking hypothermia for everything else I got signed up sure. for? So it's st still kind of up in the air at this point, whether it's a uh, I don't want to say do uh, basically a do not start just for safety purposes. Well, I, you know, um, so this, this race, you know, it's, it's a Wolf Creek race management event and of the various timing companies in our state and, uh, certainly in North, some of the Northeast, you know, they're, they're very well put together. I, I, you know, I have a lot of good things to say about them. Um, but, you know, I don't entirely know what made this be, be kind of become a, a race for our group this year, but it is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a race with uh, some, a higher involvement level from our group. And we have probably close to or somewhere around like 20 or so people that are coming out to this race now well, that's a pretty good amount well and, and so and we we have people that are doing i, I want to say it every distance um category so we have some people that are doing the the, the 20 so first the race <clears throat> there's a 20 mile uh solo run and you can there's also a 20 mile midnight run so you could run a 20 mile loop in the the first 20 mile loop or you can run a 20 mile loop at midnight they have what's called the trash panda double which is you run the morning loop and then you come back and you run uh the 20 mile loop again at midnight um and i'll come back to that but then they have 100k which is like three loops because each loop's like you know around 21 ish miles and then they have the 400 mile. Um, and then they also have the 100 mile team relay. And a team can be anywhere from two to five people. Well, um, I w the thing I would come back to you about the Trash Panda Double, um, I just want to say something about my buddy Todd. So Todd, Todd's a tough dude, man. He's humble. He's quiet. He doesn't talk much. He doesn't say a lot. But Todd, Todd is a tough dude, man. Todd went on and did frozen snot. If anybody doesn't know frozen snot, that's considered or rated by trails collective as the hardest half marathon in the Northeast USA. So frozen snot's legit. And, and I didn't even go out on a year where they had a bunch of snow on the boulder field. Okay. So, but Todd went on and did frozen snot and Todd, I don't, he didn't know that he did it, but Todd fractured a rib at like, six or seven miles into that thing 
So he did, Todd finished. He, he did like six miles with like a broken rib. I mean, but Todd's coming out to Rabbit Raccoon and he, uh, <clears throat> so he's doing the trash panda double. Well, he's coming out and, you know, doing the loop in the morning. Then he's being super dad and running his kids to hockey practices and games. So he's going to be running around all day, take, being a dad, taking his kids to hockey and stuff. Then he's going to be coming back and running another 20 miles. So, you know, uh, um, I, I just wanted to say that because I think Todd's a special human being. But, um, but yeah, like we got a couple guys that are in the 100 mile. So there's there's six relay teams signed up this year. We have two uh, of the relay teams or, or our teams. Uh, so our friend Sarah organized a team called Sarah's – their team named Sarah's Angels. And then our friend, uh, Megan, uh, Megan, she goes by, uh, her, her nickname self given, by the way, nobody gave her this name sort of, uh, she went, uh, she goes by granny, granny G Marco. So, um, so we made, so the race is called rabid raccoon. So we, so we have a team called the rabid grannies and, Megan, I would actually say is kind of humble or, or I think she's humble because when Megan first ke- started coming out with us, she was really kind of getting, getting into running or getting back into running. And she was running totally flat. Then she was doing no Hills or anything like that. And so she would always say, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to granny pace it. That's what she would say. Like, you know, like I'm going to go out relax and I'm going to granny pace it. Well, um Megan's become quite a good runner <laughs> like so she doesn't you know if, if she started out granny pacing it as she would call it she doesn't do that anymore so you know we're trying to uh Megan's actually signed up for her her first 50 miler this year so if that says anything about where where she came from you know running a couple miles flat to she's gonna go I mean she's but anyways there's the two well, teams. once you get the bug you get it pretty good yeah yeah for sure and uh but yeah uh, as far as uh rabid raccoon uh there's four aid stations there um uh so the, the main parking area is there at the beach and then you got aid station one so one two three and four, four aid, aid station four is called heritage it's at the heritage trail Aid station three is Mineral Springs. Aid station two is not accessible to by car or to crew. So aid stations one, three, and four are accessible to, to anybody crewing. Um, so we are going to have um, uh, a team tent there this year at aid station four, uh, right next to the aid station. So something, this is new, and I have to give all the credit in the world to my buddy Matt for even making this suggestion. So something we started using at, at winter running or winter events this year is really what it is, is an ice fishing tent, but we don't use it for ice fishing. It, it The thing is awesome. It pops up in, I don't like a minute or that might be a slight exaggeration, but I mean, a couple of minutes tops, you, this thing's popped up. And then um, in February, this was the first time I used it, uh, but I got one of those indoor safe, just that's called a portable buddy, but it's just like a little portable, you know, propane heater. And I'll tell you, man, like, so you're right. Like at Rabbit Raccoon this weekend, you know, it's supposed to be in the forties and then in the twenties overnight, um, possibility of rain so you know there's a lot of um you know opportunity and or risk there for for getting or being hypothermic for somebody that's doing the really long distance stuff so you know um we plan to have like so jamie and i were on the relay team with megan so you know, we're all going to go out and do a 20 mile loop and I'm leaving myself available. If one of our friends 
needs to pick up a pacer or needs something at night. Um, and if myself or, or if somebody, if one of us needs to go out and help or support or pace, then we'll, we'll leave ourselves open to that. Um, if, if I don't have to go out for a second loop, I might go out the Sunday after the race and try to, um, try to help deflag the course. But I mean, Jamie, so the hundred, the full hundred mile solo race starts at 4 a.m. The national anthem is supposed to start at 3:50 a.m. And so, uh, truthfully, my, my wife and I, and um, my youngest, we actually plan to be basically camped, you know, outside for 36 hours straight. So, my kid, uh, my youngest. She came out to uh, the Laurel Highlands Ultra one time for a friend. It's a 70 mile race, like a point to point race through the Laurel Highlands hiking trail. And I know you know that race, Dean. So, um, but my daughter came out and when we were there crewing and doing some pacing for a friend, and she had the time of her life, like, loved it. So, you know, she'll be out there. Uh, you know, with her swim parka and dry and, you know, but we're going to have a tent and uh, we're going to have a dry heated tent area. So, and um, Friday night, Sunday night, um, we're going to have a hotel booked somewhere close by. And then one of our friends that's on a relay team, she has a hotel booked Saturday night. So, and they're, they're close so that, you know, if somebody absolutely got done and had to go shower off or go get cleaned up, you know, um, you know, someone on our team will have a place close by, you know, but we plan to be out there for no less than 36 hours, you know, camped outside. So, and I'm going to have a little kid there. So I had to have somewhere dry and warm for them and, and if somebody, you know, but, you know, so we're just trying to make a, a, a whole thing out of it where, you know, when someone's not racing, when, if they're showing up for a relay or whatever. Um, th so this was a new race. Wolf Creek started last year. Um, and I, I think there were like 20 or so people that had run that registered for the hundred miler last year. And only four finished. It was, it was, um, well, you know, uh, Dean Carnassus, um, came out to support this race this year. So there's certainly more, um, he, you know, he's supporting the race and, and supporting, um, Wolf Creek and visit Beaver County and all that good stuff. So, um, I, you know, uh, I like think the world of this guy, you know, when you look at his, you know, uh, ultra marathon resume, what he did between, you know, 2004 and 2011. And he, here he is. And he's, this dude's still going out running hundred and 150 mile races, total animal. So, you know, I'm, 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 I'm hoping to uh, see him at, at the book signing tomorrow, but you know, but I mean, the, the one thing that I will always remember about him by listening to his books, I, I, I can't read them, so I have to listen to him, is he was the first person to run around the pool naked. <laughs> <laughs> that is like the one thing that stands out because that's something that I would have loved to have said I was the first person to do. <laughs> well, you know, there's a. That sounds like uh, running Woodstock, Michigan might be the event for you. <laughs> yeah, one of these days, one of those type of races. So um, this past weekend, I believe it was, you guys went to Oil Creek and sort of yeah. previewed the course a little bit and the area. So what did you think, just getting a little bit of your feet wet on that course, like how it looks, you know, how the race director – uh i guess is I, I i've known the guy for about a year now and he's just to me he's one of those guys that cares about 
the race he puts on and his participants, but absolutely. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Jay, uh, Jacob Koster, you know, is the race director for that race. And I actually, I really, so I guess to answer your question on the trails first, um, number one, I love all of the history and everything that's, that's in that area. Um, Titusville and what's around there. Like, I just think it's a very scenic and extremely, you know, beautiful area. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a rural area, but it's beautiful. I, I mean, um, but as far as the trail system goes, um, it reminds me, it actually reminds if like, I don't want to say it feels like home, but it kind of feels like home because it reminds me of the, the trails here in, in, uh, Father County, like in what, in what you would find along like the Glacier Ridge trail or, uh, you know, so what you, what they have there in Oil Creek state park, it's, it's phenomenal. And, um, I love, you know, what, what he's doing with this stack series race. So, you know, you've had historically the oil Creek, you know, 50 K hundred K hundred mile race. And then this year is the first year they introduced the 25 K distance, which I think is awesome. Um, well, I really like, so I did not, I wanted to, and I don't remember right offhand why we didn't make it, but um, I know that the Oil Creek 5 and 13 mile uh, stacked races started last year. And a couple of our friends went out and they had nothing but wonderful and positive things to say about the race and the experience. And so, uh, but the Oil Creek 5 and 13 stacked races, so there's a five mile race followed by a 13 mile race or you can run them together <clears throat> as a stacked set of races. So you can get 18 miles between the two. And, um, you know, in terms of price value, you know, swag that you're getting for what you're spending, but to me, swag's important and all, and all that stuff, but really community is what matters. And, you know, you have some special people just out. I mean, I've just met like some just wonderful people from out that out that way. Like Tracy Hannah's phenomenal. Jacob's awesome. Uh, Chris uh, Jameson. It was awesome seeing him. Like um, I ran into him. I started, you know, I was I was anyways, I, I was running into him. At, like I saw him at like the Baker uh, ultra 50 mile race. And I was running into him at the GRT and then I ran into him and in somewhere else. And, and then after you see somebody a few times, or you know, so, and then we went out to oil Creek and, um, I want to bring the family back. You know, they fire the, they fire the engines up starting in May and, and, and I would be remiss not to thank, uh, or, or just acknowledge like Drakewell museum. Like, because, you know, we, we went out to just run some miles and see some of the trail on a cold March winter day, but Drakewell was kind enough to open their doors and give us, give a, you know, group of trail runners, like somewhere dry and warm to, to, to socialize, you know, after, after running. Um, so, I, you know, and truthfully, um, absolutely going to go back out jamie and i wanted to go out and do more miles out there the only reason we didn't is because it just that was like our first weekend in oh god like nine months we didn't have a, a weekend free for, with uh, without the kid kiddos so you know we just we just had a, a date night plan so that's the you know that's the only reason we didn't go out so um just that whole area is very beautiful, scenic, and I like the one hill they have. You're, you, I'm sure you know it, the Hill of Truth. I just like that name. Is that that might be the one that we start up. Is it like right on the other side of the museum? So it's like when you were when you cross the uh, the bridge, and then you start up back up the hill. There's like a a really steep section coming up there. 
Yeah, so that, that's like the first hit. Yeah, that's how we start the race. The, the five miler, we start up that hill then. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the, the rustic or rusty bridge, right? Then you go up that hill. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's that's how you start for the five miler. And then the 13, I think you got like a mile around um, the museum area before you hit that. So both races actually hit that. And I think that's the hardest part of the ra both races. And then it yeah. gets a lot easier after that. I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but the hard part's over after like a mile in each race. Yeah. Well, you know, and then Jacob too, you know, uh, he's, he's a heck of a runner. Like he's, he's a strong runner himself. He wouldn't, I don't know how much he'd say that, but I, I could tell he's, you know, I, I saw, I don't do a ton of this, but I could tell there had to be a Strava segment, you know, cause I could tell he was like going to get, bust out you know so you try to let it rip for like a half mile <laughs> and uh you know so I, I i had to see what this segment was in there like quite a few people to run it and you know from some of your uh local you know like this half of the state sort of like uh trail runners there's some there's some good people that run that segment and i saw you know i saw you know jacob's times on there he's 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 a he's a heck of a runner himself so yeah i think some of those segments because the i think it's the same course a little bit um for the oil creek 100 and stuff like that so you got those big names that come in for like the 100 and 100k 50k or whatever that just yeah. turn and burn and even for the 5 and 13 last year some of the guys that i was running with and i was just like you guys gonna slow down anytime soon you're making me look like, I got, like like i'm crawling here up this hill so there is some good competition and even like i don't want to say just competition wise but even the people or well, every person i interacted with last year at the five and 13 you know that either just did the five the 13 or both hands down nice people they're all supportive the volunteers yeah. <clears throat> like jacob they were just it's one of those races that it to me it left me with that feeling that i want to go back and support them any way i can yeah and i'm thankful that they put on the event that they do and even like you said the museum like it was open that time of year and they just let me go use the bathroom and clean up a little bit no problem and then i i you know then i spent the whatever i think it's five bucks to get in the museum which is hell of a deal for all the history and the cool things that you get to see so if somebody goes to the race or just wants to visit you could spend literally two days in that museum walking around the area and not see everything it's amazing yep oh and one bonus this year uh that's new with the race is i saw that they're offering actually free camping they they have a certain number of um campsites that they just have allotted uh that are normally i think they're normally like 40 dollars a night or something like that and so they have a certain number of of just campsites it, so i mean the race is in like may it's a beautiful time of year and there's a there's a, a a creek or a stream that's right there that people you go down they can go swimming and, and all that good stuff so i mean you have you know free camping swimming the engines will be fired up. You got the historical museum right there. I, I, I um, you know, I, I've gotten to interact with Tracy from out that area a number of times. I've gotten to uh, meet and interact with uh, with Jacob. I was interacting with him quite a bit online, and then got to meet him and interact with him in person. He seems like an absolutely incredible guy, and I, I really like what they're doing and and everything they seem to be about. You know, like. To me, I don't know. Like, all I look for really, man, is just like, I just try to look at, like, you know, the heart and soul and the purpose behind what a person's doing. And they just seem like, like, they're, they're just, like you said, they're, they're, it's about community. 
fun, loving, supportive people. And, you know, I, I, I like what they're doing. So it, it, it's, it's definitely a vibe, I guess is the way to say it, that you yes. can feel before, during, and after the race. Not all races do that. There's a yep. few that I don't want to mention yet, but for this race, you definitely get that vibe that you're like part of something and you want to continue to be part of something. So, all right. Well, I think that's a good ending point for the night. Um, but I do want to get you back next week or the week after, after Raccoon, because I want to see how the Butler County Milers did, how, how you feel afterwards. And I want to talk about um, your plans for the year, your biggest accomplishments, and any recommendations you have for races uh, next time I get to speak with you. But I will see you this weekend. Okay. And hopefully, hopefully the weather holds off that, you know, we could uh, actually enjoy it. Maybe Mother Nature will actually make it 50 instead of 30. But, um, yeah, let's, let's say this is a good stopping point for the first ever Only Eye Athletics uh, podcast. And I thank you, Sean, for being part of that. I really enjoy you, your group, um, your family, Jamie, the kids, everybody involved in your group, and your smile. So keep thank up the you, good man. work, and let's have a good weekend. Yes, sir. I'll see you race day, brother. All right. See you there.